Just look at this exit poll. If this is correct, Labour has indeed uh, got a landslide. It's going to be a good night for the Labour Party. Not so good, of course, for the Conservatives. I just want to have a moment for reform, which looks like this party is going to win 13 seats tonight if this exit poll is correct. A reminder that Nigel Farage, the leader of the Reform Party, has failed to be elected as an MP, I think it's six or seven times in the past. And let's give this some context as to the last election, because what we're seeing here is a really volatile electorate. We had a landslide in 2019. Here you can see the Conservatives gained a lot of ground, 365 seats, well above the 326 needed. This was a landslide. But listen, tonight, if that exit poll is correct, Labour has wiped the floor with them. And I think the best comparison I can give you tonight is actually the 1997 election where Tony Blair came to power with a huge majority, 418 seats. The House of Commons was slightly bigger for that election. He had a majority, I believe, of four, 179. Tonight, if the exit poll is correct, we would have a majority for the Labour Party of 410. So a lot of parallels, I think, can be drawn from this this evening. But we'll have to see as the night goes on whether that exit poll is correct and also where Labour is getting those seats from and some of those contested areas, because it's not just the Labour Party and the Conservatives tonight. A lot of attention on the Liberal Democrats and reform. Just as you were, you, you were asking, um, the majority at 170, 170 yeah. uh, if that proves to be, uh, it's considerably larger than Thatcher's first, but you say Blair's, uh, it's on a par with, it's just slightly less than Blair. It's in slightly less than Blair. Boris Johnson, who had a landslide in 2019, had a majority of 80. So that can give you a really good comparison of where we're at with these elections in terms of the majorities we're seeing. It's a volatile electorate. I couldn't believe when we were reporting on this election in 2019, with the incredible landslide we saw for the Conservative Party, that you could see a landslide in the other direction five years later. Thank you, Anna. Appreciate it. Let's go back to look, as we look at this numbers, try to digest what yeah. the, the first exit poll that's come in the last seven minutes. Gideon is here with us. And Gideon, I mean, the, this is, of course, the polls tend to be, have always been on the mark, haven't they? I think it's fair to say that these can be trusted to an extent. Is there have ever been... Um, have they no, ever moved so much away from this? I'm not I, trusting... I, <laughs> I'm not putting your job I, on the line I, here. I, I hope so. I mean, you know, the, the exit poll in particular has had uh, a really good track record right. of, of right. accuracy <clears> um, <throat> sort of since 2001, 2005, which is when this new method of, of, div of running the exit poll came in. So it's, it's been pretty accurate. Of course, you know, we have to be cautious. Um, we will want to see some more seats before and actual results before we take yeah. final decisions, but it has got a pretty good track record. The landslide of Labour is matched only arguably by the hurricane <laughs> Uh, or earthquake, electoral earthquake of reform. <laughs> 30, if this is right, 13 seats for recall, reform. One assumes one of them's for Nigel no, Farage. Is, yeah, Where did those, those votes came from Conservative? Uh, to a large extent. Uh, definitely we found that reform was picking up a lot of their votes from disgruntled Conservative voters who were particularly mm -hmm. concerned about immigration and asylum, particularly concerned about the, the government's handling of that issue, um, not very happy with the government, not very happy with uh, Rishi Sunak, not very uh, attracted by Keir Starmer either, mm. and, and they've gone to, a large proportion of them have gone to reform, and it looks like they may have sneaked past the Conservatives in some of these seats. Again, we, we need to see how this plays out a bit more, but it uh, looks like that's a, that's a good performance for them. I mean, initially, I think the polls that seen prior to this was suggesting three seats for reform, between three to five. This is substantial. Mm -hmm. if, if this goes, uh, this, if the night does show that to be like this. I mean, I spoke to two guests on my show, two young students mm -hmm. who were tactically voting for reform on that very point, Gideon. Go ahead. So Keir Starmer has thanked those who voted for him. He's saying, <clears throat> um, obviously, on the basis of the exit poll, Sir Keir says, uh, putting their trust in a change Labour Party. To everyone who's campaigned to Labour in this election, to everyone's voted and put their trust in us, thank you. He's posted that on... Um, I still call it Twitter. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave you to call it X. I, I, I'm a boomer as well, Rachel. We both call, <laughs> I call it, it Twitter. Twitter. Um, the, we need to just make one... Let's just... We've got about an hour and 25 minutes. 
before we're going to actually get a real live result, which we can talk about, which it's likely to be. But before we do, the boundary changes that took place, which were dramatic, essentially 80% of all constituencies yeah. in Britain were different this time. In Britain, in England, of the 533, only 55 remained the same. And that there's a, a geographic... Yeah, there's a, that relates, just for viewers, for context, it relates to the movement of people, how people are moving around the country, and these are the changes we've seen uh, in, in the last few years. Do you agree with that? That, the, 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 that I mean, we know that the boundary changes had a, gave an inbuilt majority larger to Conservatives. To the Conservatives, yeah. But did it make a difference? Uh, so, as you say, it will have, will have made a difference. I mean, I think when you see a... Uh, you know, a sort of a, such a countrywide large swing mm. towards Labour as we expect to be seeing on the basis of this exit poll, um, that, can, that can overwhelm some of these boundary changes. You know, the, the big picture mm. here is uh, a clear sense amongst the public, which we've seen for a long time, actually, that they wanted, to, they wanted a change um, and Labour being the ones who are making the most of that. And, and we've seen that across the country, probably, here. Uh, the Liberal Democratic leader, Sir Ed Davey, has said his party was on course for our best result in a century. Well, if they get it gets 68, yeah. which is what the exit poll would suggest, this is way more than they've seen, even at the time of coalition. 61, I make 61 seats 61 for the Liberal seats. Democrats, yes, 61. Yeah. I imagine uh, that, the, Gideon, that the SNP's getting at 10, their losses are Labour's gain. You would expect so in most of those cases. Um, when we know that it was looking like a, a, a tightish race in, yeah. in Scotland, but Labour with their noses ahead. Um, and Scotland, there were a number of seats that were really on the margin. So if Labour can have slightly outperformed there, they may look like they've, they've won and outperformed on yeah. seats as well. The Lib Dems, I mean, they have paid a price for going into coalition with the Conservatives and with Cameron. Is this the voters saying, we forgive you? Well, I think what's interesting, if you look at the polls more broadly, is the, the overall national vote share that the Liberal Democrats were getting wasn't that, hasn't gone up that much from 2019. Right. Again, we know, again, we need to see how much this is borne out in the exit poll and the results as they come through. But I think probably what it does do is, is what you said earlier, Richard, it shows how they've targeted quite effectively, benefited from tactical mm. voting and gone after those sort of conservative uh, Liberal Democrat Strongholds. seats in, yeah. in, in the South, particularly. And in Scotland, I'm seeing the NCP uh, are expected to secure 10 seats, it seems. Um, um, I think we are expected... I think we initially... Um, Labour was expected to do much better in Scotland than, than what we were expecting. Is that right? Yes, that and, and, and I think we've seen... Uh, obviously, the, the SNP have had a number of leadership mm. changes that they've, they've, had to, they've had to deal with. Right. Um, but uh, they've, there's also sort of growing disgruntlement with, with the way that they're running the country and a breaking down of the link between support for independence yes. and support for the SNP, which Labour maybe has benefited from. So now the, we, we wait for the results. We just saw some pictures there of <laughs> voting... Uh, of counting underway. Now, this lots is a fast... Bris, lots of running, yeah. brisk so, walking. Go ahead. This is a fascinating bit of British electoral trivia. Uh, this is the... It's in Blythe, uh, which is likely to be arguably the first constituency to report. An unusual one. Mm -hmm. Normally it's Houghton and Sunderland or it's I Newcastle. It's Newcastle. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 boundary place. changes. Yeah. So now Blythe and Ashington is likely to be the first and they practice. They practice because they want to be the first. There's a bit of competition between them, let's just be honest. It really is. <laughs> and they, they practice. Last election, the one that was expected to be first uh, failed because there had to be a recount. Um, oh, was, was that Sunderland? It was Sunderland. Yeah, it Sunderland, was Sunderland Central. Yeah, it was Sunderland. So, you know, if there's a cup of tea to be brewed, um, you've got plenty of time because we're not expecting... And if we're looking at a, at a Labour majority here. Yes. I mean, the counting surely will be much quicker, would it not, Gideon? Uh, it, will still take it will still take throughout the, throughout the night and we'll, we'll, that... we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see the, 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 you know, the ones who want to really race and get that, get that first constituency medal um, through, but we'll still be looking at that sort of 2 to 4 a.m. period when we'll get the okay. bulk of it through. But we will be wanting to see these early... Um, election, these are early results, yeah. if they um, validate the exit poll. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what we're going to be looking for. And there's a sort of spread of different seats. So there's there's Bly that you mentioned, um, yeah. uh, Bassett Law, I think, coming up, uh, Basildon, rather. Mm. Um, so some of those will give us a, an indication. You know, I, I'm, we're always going to be a bit cautious when we're a pollster. Um, we, you know, we want to see if more than just a couple of seats, but they will give us a sense. Um, and the exit poll team will which be looking the, at this as well. What's the first one that you think will give us a best sense of which way it's going to go? So I think the, 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 the interesting thing here is because, as, as we said on the, with the wall, we've got so many different battlegrounds mm. going on that you'll want to get a spread of all of them. You'll want to look at what's happening in Scotland, for example, because, you know, given what we've seen with the SNP seats, we'll want to look at what's happening in the south-east and the south-west in some of those uh, Conservative Lib Dem battlegrounds. And then we'll want to see kind of across some of the areas where Boris Johnson did so well with his coalition in 2019, the so-called red mm. wall seats across the Midlands and the north. Um, and see some movement there too.